enjoying this trip. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. They don't let doggies in the backcountry at Great Smoky Mountains National Park. So you've got to stay home for this one. Hello, I'm David Gray, and after what seemed like an exceptionally long winter, I am on the road for the first backpacking trip of the 2022 season. I'm heading down to Gatlinburg, where I'm going to be meeting up with Carl and Travis later today, and then starting tomorrow, we're going to be doing a hike in the iconic Great Smoky Mountains National Park. The plan is that we're going to start out of uh, Elkmont Campground and Trailhead, and then tomorrow we're going to be hiking up the Little River Trail to the intersection with the Goshen Prong Trail, head on over to campsite number 23, spend the night, then on uh, Friday, we're going to hike back down the Goshen Prong, intersect the Little River Trail again, make a right turn up to campsite number 30, which is known as the Three Forks Campground, spend the night on Friday night, and then hike on back to the cars on Saturday. Those campsites in that area might sound familiar to you if you've watched my videos because they're the exact same campsites that I used and the area that I had to exit my hike from when I couldn't get back up to my car at Clingman Snow because I ran into the uh, closed Sugarland Mountain Trail after I'd gone all the way up that brutal hike up the Rough Creek Trail. Weather-wise, it looks like it could be uh, interesting, not unlike what you'd expect in the springtime in the Smokies. Uh, tomorrow looks to be uh, warm in the 70s, but we're going to be getting a ton of rain overnight and then into tomorrow. Friday looks to be the best day of the hike with sunny skies and temperatures in the low 60s. And then Saturday is going to be a little bit chillier, uh, cold morning, but still partly cloudy skies and a uh, little chance of rain until probably after we end our hike. And with that, let's get this long six and a half hour drive to Gatlinburg going, meet up with the guys there this afternoon, and spend the evening enjoying the sights and sounds and people watching that Gatlinburg has to offer. in uh, Pigeon Forge, which is quirky little stuff like the Titanic sitting next to the road. We made it to Gatlinburg. Traffic hasn't changed much and neither has the town, but it's nice to be here. We made it to the Jack Huff's Motor Lodge. This place is so cool. It reminds me of the Art Devil and Motor Inn in Lake Placid. Well, I am checked in at the Jack Huff's Motor Lodge and she gave me some rather disturbing information when I checked in that she goes, well, I hope you're able to do your hike at all. And I go, well, what do you mean? And she said, uh, well, the park is closed. We'll see if we ever make a video from this, but I thought I would share that little tidbit. Gotta roll with punches on these trips. Hey, hey stranger! Hey, man. <laughs> How you doing? What's up, man? It's good to see you. How's it going? Good, except she told me the park's closed. Well, yeah, <laughs> possibly. We're gonna, we're gonna keep an eye on that. I like the gifts they leave at this hotel for the guests. That's kind of nice. That would be a nice alternative. But I'm, just, I'm just saying that's a freaking beautiful it, hike. It's beautiful because you're up on top of the bulbs most of the time that you that you hike. Wouldn't, wouldn't that be funny if we start here in Gatlinburg? <laughs> everything I did on the way down, I'm explaining the hike and everything. Yeah. Hey, we're on the Appalachian Trail. <laughs> they kicked us they out of the National us. Park. <laughs> That would be a great hike, and we got cars to do it. For those of you thinking about staying at the Jack's Huff's Motor Lodge, this is what they leave on the bed when you check in. Actually, this is courtesy of Carl. <laughs> Moseying in Gatlinburg. Carl's guide, guide tour here. I'm not sure where we're heading, but it's uh, very festive looking here. Mountain bird, the old name stay. Uh -huh. <laughs> decisions, decisions. Pizza looks good. It's a big city Reuben is what I normally get, which looks really good too. Travis is going with the sampler. They actually put the uh, beers on the spot on the little menu. Generous, so Carl and Travis went with the Reubens and went with the pizza. This is 
one of those moments when uh, when I'm hoping for smell vision because it smells really good. I'd say the winds are starting to pick up. <laughs> All right, I thought I'd run through the uh, history of the Jack Huff's Motor Lodge here a little bit. Love doing this kind of stuff. I did it with the uh, Art Devlin Motor Inn in Lake Placid. But Andy Huff is the one who actually got going on this. I think he moved to this area around uh, 1897 or so. Had a bunch of sawmills and he was letting some of the people, the lumberjacks and the people who worked at the sawmills, uh, live in his house and was didn't feel it was right to charge him any money. So ultimately he built a little, little hotel. Eventually that hotel grew into a 100 room, three story motel that became known as the Mountain View. Jack came along, I think in 1903, he was born into that family, had hospitality in his veins, but what he really had in his veins were these mountains behind us. So uh, after having worked and lived with the Mountain View for quite a while and seen Gatlinburg transform into a destination type of city, he actually moseyed on up into the mountains and in 1926 built a a little lodge at the top of Mount Lacant. You guessed it, the Mount Lacant Lodge. And he was the caretaker, he and his wife were the caretaker with their family of that place for the next 35 years. Finally, in 1956 or so, he came down off the mountain, found this prime little piece of real estate here and built the original Jack Huff's Motor Lodge. There you go, that's the story. Can't make this stuff up. And back in the day, they used to have cages in the front for the bears. Yeah. And then they yeah. said, hey, this is taken away from what these things are doing. Singing, singing to them. Singing to them. <laughs> singing to all these llamas. Singing to them. Yeah. And she was, she was handing out like the the leftover, whisperer. all yeah. the leftover food. And so we were getting selfies with the llamas. And <laughs> it was it was really cool. <laughs> if you could ever do that, man. I mean, that was, that was one memorable trip. So we start here in Jake's Creek Trail. We go up Jake's Creek to 23 on day one, then we backtrack over to here over to 30 on day two, then we go back down the way we came in, except we take the little river Out trail of, back to Oakmont. Oakmont. Yes. If we can get there. If we can get there. <laughs> We're doing a uh, late night uh, pizza run. <laughs> We're getting out before the storms run in, but the winds are about 40 miles an hour. You probably can't hear them up there, but we're heading to the pizza slice place. <laughs> it's a slice of pepperoni, please. A slice of pepperoni, that you been good? Yep. Do you like any parmesan uh, or red pepper? No, I'm good, thank you. Do you want napkins? That's my idea of a slice of pizza. <laughs> Good morning. Welcome to uh, day number two of the trip. First day of, of backpacking. If we can get to Elkmont. <laughs> Indications are still from the park service that all the roads are closed and everything due to high winds, but Pretty sure they're going to have the road to Elkmont open. If we can get there, we can hike. I think we may have been extremely fortunate with the weather. It rained all night long, hard. That's all died down. The rain has cleared out when you look at the radar. Next few days look to be pretty dry here. Today could be a really nice day with temperatures in the 70s, and I think the sky's starting to clear. But it looks like it's going to be a beautiful day in the woods if we can get to the woods. So with that, we'll get the second day started, and we're going to head over to the Wagon Wheel restaurant for the traditional pre-hike breakfast. And we'll head over to Elkmont and get this hike started. Caravanning over to the uh, Wagon Wheel restaurant for breakfast and we actually have sunshine. Looks like it's going to be a beautiful day for hiking. I don't know why I was calling it the Wagon Wheel. <laughs> it's a log cabin pancake house. And the other thing that's kind of strange is there's our cars. They're the only two in the parking lot. So I don't think they're open for whatever reason. Last time I was here, we had to wait in line. That doesn't look too encouraging. <laughs> what's uh, What's going on? Oh, wow. it's 7 a.m. Well, we'll figure out plan B, I guess. Now we made it to Crockett's Breakfast Camp, which apparently is supposed to maybe even be better than the log cabins. Plan B for breakfast. Those don't look so bad. 
I thought uh, Carl was reading the newspaper, but <laughs> it's a good newspaper. <laughs> That's it's a fun newspaper. Oh, I love this place already. Well, that doesn't look so bad. And that may have been the world record for the fastest time. <laughs> I think it was like two minutes from ordering until it showed up out here. It's the best part of backpacking is the breakfast or the hike. <laughs> well, that is quite a group picture. <laughs> it is ominous, except for one thing. This is actually the entrance to the Elkmont campground. <laughs> so we made it as far as we need to make it, but the road's not open any further, and it was definitely closed up to Newfound Gap. So this is about the only thing you can do in the park, and it's precisely what we need to do. <laughs> well, this brings back fond memories. That's the little kiosk place that bailed me out and found me a shuttle after my ill-fated 2017 hike. This is just kind of surreal. There's like no one here. The last time I was here in 2017 walking through it, it was absolutely packed. So I think it's just a little early in the season and midweek. So I'm guessing we'll have the, we may have the woods to ourselves here. We have arrived at the Elkmont uh, Little River Trail trailhead. Let's get this hike going. And there's no other cars in this parking lot. Final gear preparations going. Looks like it's going to be a beautiful spring day in the woods. So far we've just gotten incredibly lucky on this. The roads were open just as far as we needed them to be to get here. The weather, I thought we'd be hiking at least half a day for sure and some heavy rain. Beautiful weather, beautiful spring weather, probably 70 degrees. Couldn't have gotten any more fortunate. So there's final gear preparation here. Then we're going to get this hike started on the Jake's Creek Trail first. And then head up to the Goshen Prong and then over to Campsite 23 today. And we are geared up and ready to go. Carl is once again sporting the Walmart look <laughs> with tonight's dinner <laughs> in the bag. <laughs> Taking one for the team. Buns and chips. There we go. All right, okay, we're geared we're up, started. ready to go. We are hiking slowly, <laughs> getting started slow. Heading up the Jake's Creek Trail. We can figure out where it starts. Yeah, I think that's it over there. We're hiking. Remnants of long ago in Elkmont. As we get started, throw back to the glory days of Elkmont. Had all these little greenhouses lined along here. Oh, uh, this was his house? Yeah. Oh, cool. This is a house before he was once leased by Colonel, leased by Colonel David Chapman. And he was the first appointed commissioner of the Smokies. Oh, that's really cool. After climbing up much more terrain than I remembered, this is the uh, Cucumber Gap Trail. So it heads over and intersects with the Little River Trail. Here's what we're hiking in. A beautiful day for a stroll in the woods and you can see evidence of uh, the winds we had last night, which they said were upwards of 90 miles an hour. Cool little spot as we uh, near the top of the climb. We've been doing non-stop since we got out of the car. <sighs> well, I was wrong about that being the top way back there. You get going on these climbs and they just kind of weave back and forth. Every time you're around the corner and you think you're done, this is what you see the next time around, just one more up and around the bend. And I was telling these guys, because I thought we were going up the Little River Trail Goshen Prone and then back the Little River Trail. I didn't know we were doing the Jake's Creek Trail. This is much more severe <laughs> than the Little River Trail. I was telling these guys it's just 100 foot per mile grade. Well, this has been about 300 per mile nonstop since the cars. So what that tells me is when we ever get to the top of this climb, we'll be heading back down quite a bit to the Little River Trail, probably on something that's just like this. So, well, there was no sign or anything, but we believe that little stretch might have been the top. So I think we're heading downhill all the way to the Little River Trail because we probably have quite a few hundred feet of elevation gain to give up on our way down through, uh, I don't know if these are rhododendrons or mountain laurel. I don't know the difference. They look the same to me. Uh, look at this little spot. A little bit of a puzzle to try to work your way across. See how Carl does this. He's losing the log technique. I don't know if I would have done the log technique, but 
I think I may go a little higher up above them there and do the rock technique. Uh-oh, I don't know where he's going now. Oh, I don't like those logs. I think I'm going to go find a rock technique here. But Carl did it. I think I'm going up above and I'm putting the camera away first. Here's our next important milestone. That's where we came from. Jake's Creek Trail, two and a half miles or so. This is the Little River Trail. Look at that grade. I know it's kind of hard to tell, but it's a gentle grade. Even more gentle than what we just came down, which was a gentle grade. And it goes like that all the way back to Elkmont. I remember when I was here in 2017, I went down this way when I was bailing. I was doing four and a half miles an hour. It was four and a half miles from one of the intersections I was at down to Elkmont, and I made it an hour. Let's see, we're heading up to the Ocean Prong Trail, which is 1.4 miles, and then I think it's another two and a half maybe after that over to Campsite 23. So we're getting there. After our little break, we're now hiking along the Little River Trail, and that is the Little River. We've reached the intersection with the Goshen Prong Trail, that's where 23 is, down that way. Heading this way to campsite 23 today. We'll be back here tomorrow and up that way to campsite 30. Nice little bridge they're giving us out here on our way out to number 23 and beautiful little spot. site for sore legs for sure. We've arrived at campsite 23 and I remember in 2017 thinking that's a pretty easy thing to walk right past. We're heading into our home for the night. Campsite 23. This is what it looks like. It's pretty spread out. Probably about the size of a football field. You can tell the, where they are with these little trails. There's one back in those rhododendrons. Way back yonder what I used to call the annex. That's where I stayed. I think that's probably where we'll stay this time too. And then there's actually, remember, at least one more way back there. And then we also found one as we were walking in across the river on the other side that I hadn't seen the last time I was here. Here it is, campsite 23. Pretty cool little spot. Well, figuring out there's not too many ideal places to do your uh, gravity bag hanging from. So this is about the best I could come up with. Great. Might take a little bit of work. We'll have four liters of clean water here pretty quick. So much needed in Durax R4. Advil with dirt on it. <laughs> I dropped it on the ground. Oh, feels awfully good to be in camp. Oh, this is the exact camp that I stayed at on the 2017 trip. Very nice to be here. It's about uh, a little over eight miles. A lot harder than I thought it was going to be. <laughs> Especially, I don't know if you thought about this, David, but uh, glad you planned this, bro. Hey, I'll be here. In spite of me planning, it's turned out to be good so far. As a special treat, Carl is treating all the viewers and Travis and I to a North we're, Carolina we're all trying it for the first time. North Carolina thing. Uh, Liver mush. Liver mush. Liver mush. Inspired Are by all the viewers out there salivating right now, like I am. I know Travis is. He's over here with a paper towel trying to wipe up all the drool. Maybe it tastes better <laughs> than it smells. We'll see. And we do have a can of spam as backup if necessary. But at this point in time, our situation is vastly improved because we got a pretty nice fire going and a glorious day in the woods. Packy Gourmet Cheddar Cheese Spread time, and no, I'm not sponsored by them, and no, they have never given me a single packet of this free, but yes, they did send me a video for my 60th birthday party video thing that my daughter Annie put together, which, by the way, means more to me than all of that other stuff. Carl gets the first one. 
Because he brought the liver mush. Thank you. You're welcome. Is it, is it crunchy? Good. No. Yeah. We're going to be full before we get to the cheddar or the uh, liver mush. Mm. We hope so. I'm excited for the liver mush. Yeah. Okay. Actually, no, I'm a little excited to try it. For the second course of the meal tonight, we've got uh, gourmet, ultra gourmet hot dogs. So we're doing them over the fire. Kind of like the spam tree from the Chia Wilderness last night. And then as the final course, the creme de la creme forest, the piece de la restance or whatever they call it, it's the uh, liver mush. <laughs> We're trying to gear ourselves up for the liver mush. I'm going to do this here. All right, trail dogs here, they're done. I really like nothing better than that. Over the fire, out in the woods, Great Smoky Mountains National Park. Doesn't get much better than that. Uh, liver mush preparation time. Mm -hmm. And for all of you liver mush connoisseurs out there, <laughs> we're not you know who you are. <laughs> there are very few of you. Mm. Right, I got I to kind of look over your shoulder here. Make sure you're doing this right, Carl. Thanks, David. <laughs> I'm not sure there's a wrong way to do this. So I don't feel Somehow I feel like we're doing it for you, some of you viewers out there from North Carolina or something, or wherever this is a thing. Yeah. Because uh, you don't find liver mush in Indiana. It's not, an Al <laughs> it's not an Alabama thing either. It doesn't have any smell. <laughs> doesn't smell like it sounds? No, it doesn't smell <laughs> bad. I wouldn't say it smells bad. It's in that sizzle. Sizzle sounds good, but that doesn't tell you the whole story. Mm. Oh, oh, yummy, yummy. yummy. Mm. Yeah, it doesn't look that bad. No. Yeah. Looks yeah. can be deceiving. I can't believe we're doing this. We're keeping an open mind. <laughs> Are we ready? Yeah. All right. Don't eat it yet. I'm going to get more than everybody else. All right, that's good. I'm going to give you the whole piece. Okay. That'll work. And there. I'll give you plenty more. That's good. You can okay. have mine if you That's want. good. Cheers. Let's do a taste. Cheers. cheers. Liver mush, cheers. Okay. Cheers. One, two, three. Mm. Not bad. Not bad. Yeah. It doesn't really have a whole lot of flavor. It's got a lot of like, cornmeal. Mm -hmm. Really? Yeah, real milly. I wouldn't I should... that. I wouldn't turn it that down. Here. Well, we did liver mush, guys. <laughs> and so far, Not bad. we're still upright. So far. <laughs> it hasn't killed us yet. For all you Carolina folks that are in the liver mush, not bad. We wouldn't turn it down. Why is this not going better? I, I, just, I don't know. Says the fire guy that doesn't know how to be fired. <laughs> yeah. I just think it's not enough oxygen. I think it's like it's smothered a little bit. Which side? This side? I just think in between. The whole thing? So take this off? Take it and maybe put it across. I mean, smoke. there's smoke going, but I don't think they have much of a fire going. But it's like about us. We don't have much of a fire going either, so... I guess we're in that camp together. Yeah. A lot of smoke and no fire. No, it's going to go. Yeah. I mean, we have too many coals down there and too much wood in there. Yeah. It's drying out right now. <laughs> Trying to figure out the bear bag. Hang on, Got a little hook here that you put your that bear in. Right. Okay. Uh -huh. Keep all your smell. Rotate it back up. We got a little clip on this end. Piece of cake. Hey, there's a geyser basin like in the back country and like crazy. Really? We had it all to ourselves. Like back in the prehistoric <laughs> cool. times. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Not exactly what sure happened here. One entire baffle, which is kind of like this thing's at the baffle. This entire baffle just blew out. <laughs> We're covered in feathers. Kind of laughing about it, but the alternative is to cry because that is a very expensive problem because there's no repair in that bag. Make it through this trip, I guess. A lot of duct tape. 
Well, I have no idea how that happened, but it looks like somebody murdered a goose in here. <laughs> Getting started on day number two here with a uh, little bit of a feather explosion in my tent. <laughs> Good morning. Welcome to uh, day number three total for the trip, day number two of backpacking. And it is cold this morning. <laughs> Started the day with a little goose down explosion and <laughs> not in a good way in my tent unfortunately didn't seem to affect it too much kept me warm during the night this is one of those days where a little dunkin donuts coffee will probably go a long ways towards getting the old ship righted <laughs> so get, get started on that here in a little bit getting going on uh, day number two of backpacking here heading over to camp number 30 back down the trail that we came over to the uh, little river trail hang right on the little river trail up Two and a half miles or so to campground number 30, about a five and a half mile day today. Get Dunkin' Donuts coffee on a uh, frosty morning in Great Smoky Mountains National Park, but it's a kind of morning, even when you're covered with uh, goose down feathers. <laughs> it's a kind of morning that makes you realize. Every morning in Great Smoky Mountains National Park is a pretty good one. And especially when Carl's over there cooking bacon. <laughs> Looks pretty darn good. <laughs> uh, bacon in the woods. We need a little smell of vision for this here. <laughs> that is quite a treat in the backcountry. Wow, that's good. Some of it's burn. My apologies. Oh, very good. Mmm. Oh, it's a black one. Mmm. Wow. Well, I'm trying a little uh, crude sleeping bag repair. <laughs> I've obviously used all of my duct tape, and now I'm working on Carl's. <laughs> <laughs> makes it pretty easy. Well, we are geared up, ready to go on day number two, and freezing our butts off. <laughs> the temperature, if anything, keeps going down, and the nice little chilly breeze to keep you cooled off. The only thing we have left is a bunch of goose down feathers. <laughs> we're on our way, day number two, heading over to camp ground number 30. All right, we're hiking. Retrace our steps from yesterday a little bit down the Goshen Prong Trail, and then hang right on the Little River Trail, and on up to campground number 30, about 5.5 miles today. That was a little more cerebral than I needed <laughs> in the morning. <laughs> sure remember this spot from yesterday when we were going up the hill we're going downhill now but it's like a little jungle gym ninja warrior <laughs> four trees you go under over under or over under <laughs> along with some terrain some wild looking mushrooms there they're right on a tree you have to cross the trail on this hike along the Goshen Prong Trail is generally right along and that's Goshen Prong. The sound of the running water and then the little waterfalls, high pitch, low pitch. This one's got kind of a more of a throaty roar to it. It's pretty cool hiking. You don't, you don't get anything like this in Indiana. We got 24, is at the junction, basically at the junction with the Rough Creek Trail, and I think it's 1.8 after that. So I think we got two and a half miles to go up to Camp 30. This is 
the beginning of campsite number 24 or stayed in 2017 not that site stayed at one on the other end so this is uh what they call the sketchy stream crossing to get into Camp 30, which is right over there on the other side. Carl handled it like a pro, but we have arrived at campsite number 30, our home for the night if we can get there. of the fire. And this fire is really needed because the sun's going down behind the mountain here, so we get sun all around us, but here the shade and the temperature is plummeted. And the fire was nice last night, but it wasn't necessarily Cheddar cheese spread time, packet gourmet, cheddar cheese spread. Heaven, man. <laughs> I'm feeling like Bailey at this point. Where she's like, they'll literally be sitting there when I'm like eating pizza or whatever, the bus in there, and then two streams of gruel, like like a faucet. Oh, yeah, one of them's getting a little roasty there. Drop it in there. Yeah, there you go. Oh, that's pretty time. Desperate time. So, Quiddy, what happened? Any gruel? Yeah. <laughs> Final. Uh, Spam preparation here. Travis is eating his spam in a cup. How is it? Which apparently it's is good. very good. We've never done spam around a campfire, but especially a campfire in Great Smoky Mountain National Park. You have never lived. <laughs> oh my god, I'm good. I was thinking, like, not long ago we were like five feet away from the heat. Now we're like on top, like, almost climbing in the pool. <laughs> oh, oh, man. It's cold. It is cold. survival. Didn't Jeremiah Johnson spread the poles and sleep on it? Yeah. I think he did, yeah. Like a leather, uh, some sort of skin thing on top. Well, great day. Uh, down here, at least. This place is magic. David, where are you, girl? <laughs> I'm drowning out the red light. It's pretty cold. It's cold. It's, red, but it's just not. It's not even hot like this. I think these logs are just so wet. I think they'll burn down, but it'll take all night to cool. Good morning. Welcome to. Uh, Day number four of the trip, third day of backpacking. This is the last day. We've got one of the nicer hike outs you'll ever do. Uh, about six miles straight downhill to the cars down the little river trail. Man, was it cold last night. Temperature wise, it probably wasn't anywhere near the coldest night I've been out in the backcountry, but the dampness here and the fact that this basically, this campsite sits at the base of all of these mountains, like in a little hole all the cold air settles here and then there was a constant breeze going right through my nicely ventilated hexamid tent so it was a particularly cold night and to make it even worse i had one tent stake come out so one of the part of the tent was laying kind of on my head and uh, condensation was unbelievable it's like a rainforest inside my tent first order of business though is some dunkin donuts coffee 
something hot on the inside will do nicely to get the day going and we'll make that some Dunkin' Donuts coffee. Dunkin' Donuts coffee on a particularly chilly morning in Great Smoky Mountains National Park. Oh, that is just awesome. I, I don't think the setting hurts at all either. This is one beautiful place for a cup of coffee in the morning. Breakfast this morning is a hot breakfast for the first time in a long time. Mountain House scrambled eggs with bacon. And they don't look too bad, so, and then add a little bit of hot sauce. There we go. Nice having a hot breakfast on a morning like this. Well, we are geared up and ready to go, and camp's cleaner, cleaner than we found it. We picked up a little trash while we were here, but first order of business this morning is to do this little sketchy stream crossing and we're not quite sure how to do it. We'll give you a look here what we got. First thing in the morning. So that's the approach. It's pretty steep. Our one option is kind of like right here. I actually threw a few stones in there trying to improve it a little bit. And then Carl and I try to cross kind of right over here and then up those logs. So we know that can be done at least from the other direction but that's the little sketchy stream crossing they tell you about for campsite number 30. Well, here's Carl's approach <laughs> technique. Oh man, that looks <laughs> that looks a little dicey. I think he's got it at this point. Alright, it can be done. Well done. Travis is getting there. The rock he's on right now isn't really stable. It was a little shaky. I think he's got it. Sweet! First right. one done. Dry feet. That was the hardest one too. And we got dry feet. Nice. Oh. Well, that's what we're hiking in. And that's also our first glimpse of the sun. It's coming out now. It should warm things up nicely. Real easy trail, gentle downhill all the way to the car. Second little challenge of the morning, not far after the first challenge. Somebody was kind enough to string up a little rope, which does in fact help to stabilize you, especially on that little tree branch he has to cross right there. Whoa. Reposition our little log. Ooh, that's a heavy log. Oh, there we go. Yeah, from this direction, that's for sure. It's just a one-step thing, so if you can get it, you're right on the other rock. Uh-oh. <laughs> wow. I don't know about that. <laughs> Jeez. Good job. Pretty little springtime stretch of trail all the wildflowers and the green stuff coming out. Beautiful. Well, first significant intersection of the day. Made it back to the uh, intersection with the Rough Creek Trail, which is right behind the camera here. Campsite 24 is down here about, uh, about seven tenths of a mile or so. And then after that, we're on the nice part of the Little River Trail where there's bridges and smooth walkways for the uh, day hikers wouldn't want them crossing any creeks or anything like that. <laughs> Significant milestone in memory. That's my campsite from 2017. Making good time. The intersection with the Jake's Creek Trail. 4.2 miles to the trailhead on that sort of trail. familiar little spot cucumber gap trail that we came down the first day little river trails on the right that's the direction we're going this time and husky branch falls should be just up here we're going to get our group picture there it's 
how you know you're getting close to the Elkmont campground trailhead. <laughs> we made it back to the Little River trailhead. Normally say, which I will say here in a few minutes, we made it back to the cars, or I hope we make it back to the cars, but this is not where our cars are. The cars are at the Jake's Creek trailhead, which unfortunately is up a little hill from here, so we have a bonus little little bit distance to do here before we get to the cars, but for all practical purposes, we're pretty much finished. I think we made a little bit of a strategic mistake by not leaving one car down here. So we get a little nifty climb to finish it, but it's just around the corner up there. We made it back to the cars. Always a great sight. Well, there you have it. First backpacking trip of the 2022 season. Great Smoky Mountains National Park is in the books. This hike didn't have those incredible views that you get up on the Appalachian Trail or those high ridges, but when I think of what the Smokies is all about, and I have this picture in my mind, I think about the beautiful rivers, the trails right alongside of them, the constant sound of water, and this beautiful walk through the woods, and that's precisely what we had on this hike. Well, otherwise, we got extremely lucky. The way things were looking, we were going to have to be walking that entire first day in the rain. As it turned out, the rain cleared out just before we hiked, and we had an absolutely spectacular first couple of days. A little bit chilly this morning, but as you can see, it's turned into a, another great day, so all three of the days were just perfect. We got to share a couple really nice campsites and campfires with the best hiking crew I could ever wish to have. So it turned out to be a fantastic destination for our first trip of the year, and as I think is always the case in Great Smoky Mountains National Park, it was also a great hike.